live current events and prophecies. Shalom, first and foremost, giving all praises, honor, glory, respect, and blessings to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rachakwadash. Salutations to the Lord's elect on the four corners of the earth, pushing this truth in sincerity while patiently waiting for Yahweh Shai's return. And double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, which have taught us everything we know through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Attack is huge because more than a billion people worldwide live with some form of disability. Like Jessica Smith from Australia, she was born without a left forearm. The former Paralympic swimmer is now a disability awareness advocate and relies on the help of technology. I'm not trying to hide who I am. I'm adding and sort of expanding on who I am as a person by being able to access technology that's never been available before. Her high-tech prosthetic limp operates using artificial intelligence and can learn 14 different grips. This next clip of Jessica Smith grocery shopping demonstrates just how well this tech works in action. Three children, a six year old, a four year old, and a two year old, and the older kids are very excited about it. They think it's amazing that I'm like half human, half robot. Half human, half robot. This bionic prosthetic can give off that impression. The device converts electrical impulses from the upper arm muscles into finger movements. A special app associates grip patterns with certain muscle movements. And users can configure it themselves at home or allow technicians to do it remotely. But you see, this is this is Esau trying to play God, you know. You know, somebody somebody's born with a missing leg or a missing arm, you know. First off, if if anybody is born with a missing limb, that's judgment from the Lord for for whatever they did in their past life. Because there is a such thing as reincarnation. Okay? Um so you know here, here come here comes E with his uh technology trying to play God. You know, you you, <laughs> you over here trying to uh, outdo the most high. Look, you can't outdo the most high, man. Talking about your so-called elites and, and your scientists, okay? Ezekiel 28 and 1. The word of the Lord came unto me saying Okay, verse 2. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. So, you know. Here it is, you know, and by the way, uh, for those who are not familiar with transhumanism, this, 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 is, this is all just to, to forward the transhumanism agenda, you know, E coming with this philosophy that, you know, y'all, you can, you can be gods through technology, through, uh, you can be immortal through technology, you know. You know, you can become enfeeble through technology. This, that, forth, and the other. You know, this, this, this is all to forward the transhumanism agenda. This is all a part of Agenda Twenty One, which um, transhumanism is actually a part of Agenda Twenty One. Uh, Lord's well, I can do a video on it. Okay, but but you know, this man's coming with his, his pseudoscience. You no know, talking about you know you you can you can overcome death and this that forth and the other through technology nah nah man well the scriptures do say and men shall seek death and death shall flee from them <laughs> so hey people's gonna be in a world of hurt out here man uh 
No. What, what was I getting? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's go to Habakkuk, right? Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 5 says this. Yea, also because he transgressed by wine, and that wine is talking about, you know, uh, the the philosophies of this place the, the democracy doest thou will shall be the will of the law which was invented by Aleister Crowley okay that's why people believe they can do whatever they want right he is a proud man Who, who's a proud man the Edomites are starting with the so called elites it says neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desire as hell and is as deaf and cannot be satisfied but gather from to him all nations and heap it from to him all people. You know that that's that's what that's what this man is pushing. He's pushing rebellion. But hey, rebellion is only going to get you far. And remember what Samuel told Saul in the book of First Samuel's. Okay, he said rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So we've tried to build in the AI technology which allows us to connect to the hand anywhere basically in the world and change configuration on the device instantaneously on the fly for the customer. This sensor bracelet is being tested at the University of Sydney in Australia. It's designed to detect the slightest movements of the tendons which control the hands. These subtle movements are then transmitted via Bluetooth to a program. If you touch your carpal tunnel like that and move your fingers a little bit, you will see tiny vibrations happening on your wrist. And that's, that's how our body moves our fingers. So our sensor actually... And if you notice, that's a wristband. You know, now, it's it, it's a small thing for E to come out and say, you know, with, with, with this CHIP, you'll be able to control this or do that. You know? Like right now, they can, they can, they can, 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 uh, they can pretty much play, play, play a game on their console using this, this wristband. So this, this is them moving forward with their MOTB agenda. You know they're going, they're going, well, you know they, they're going to put this on the CHIP. They're going to say with this, you can do this, you can do that. Well, Got to watch these doubles. Uh, and we use machine learning and AI to make sense of those vibrations to figure out which finger is moving and how much. Due to okay, AI, which is the acronym for artificial intelligence, that's a, that's also a part of E's blessing, you know. That's also a part of E's blessing, you know. The condition, Arian Shah has limited mobility in his left hand. He's testing the sensor bracelet by playing simple computer games. This movements are interpreted into the game. It's a lot less movement that you need to use it than I first thought. I just hope it can make me a bit more functional with my left hand. Like especially from a computer perspective, like studying and using it all day. There are many projects around the world focused on the sense of touch. At the University of Bristol in the UK, researchers are working on simulating the different layers of human skin to allow robots to have a real human touch. And this could come in handy for making future prosthetics. We 3D print that similar structure into our artificial skin so that it can respond to contact in a similar way to, to human skin. But instead of having nerve endings, we instead mount a camera inside the sensor um, where you can see the cable coming from here so that picks up that, that movement of those papillae that are those structures inside this artificial skin so cameras are being used to simulate human touch what a fascinating approach cameras are also used as a tool for people who are blind or have low vision take this gadget for example it can be attached to glasses users can turn in the direction of a given text and well, either hold on, hold on. They also say that the uh, the CH the C hip the CHIP can also do the exact same thing. They said that if if they was to uh, apply the CHIP to the central nervous system of your brain, which is where your pineal gland is, they said that uh, you'll be able to use it 
in order to uh to, to see again. So you you see how how, how they're slowly trying to you know w wiggle the the the, the MOTV in there that the CHIP. <laughs> Yo, these devils think they're slick, but we see you. The voice command or press their finger down to have it read aloud. The AI can be trained to recognize certain products and faces too. The development of these devices often involves the same technology that's used in other sectors, like autonomous driving. The AI technology that's used to keep autonomous vehicles on the road is also useful for pedestrians. This biped gadget helps blind and people with low vision navigate the city. The cameras embedded in the device detect obstacles within a 170 degree angle, warning users with 3D sounds. Imagine it like this. If an object is moving toward the user and there's the risk of a collision, biped warns them with a sound. It's similar to parking assist in modern cars. If there's an object on your left, you'll hear the obstacle on your left hand side. The sounds indicate where the obstacle is. There are different sounds depending on whether it's a car, person or bench that's in the way. The developers see biped as a supplement to a walking stick with one big advantage. It warns users about obstacles at head level too. This smart gadget has similar features but instead it attaches to a classic walking stick. We Walk uses ultrasonic sensors and vibrates when there are obstacles nearby. Users can connect the device to their phone via Bluetooth and then use the touchpad to access Google Maps and virtual assistants, all while keeping their phone tucked away. A smart walking stick, that's cool. And for people who are deaf or hard of hearing, there are smart glasses. They enable users to read conversations in real time by converting spoken word into subtitles. Oh, well, wait a minute. Smart technology is also a part of Agenda 21. Okay? As a matter of fact, they've already, um, in uh, Agenda 21, they spoke about uh, smart cities, smart grids, you know, smart meters, smart phones, smart laptops, smart computers. You know, smart lights, smart vehicles, which smart vehicles are supposed to be vehicles that drive on our own. But a lot of this smart technology is really just making people dumber. Okay? It's, low, it's lowering their IQ. Why? Because people are becoming more dependent on technology versus using their natural abilities of what the Lord gave them from birth. Diana Martin is deaf. She's trying on smart glasses for the first time with her friend Jacqueline Press from X-Ray Glass. Can we see anything? Oh. And, and all these biometrics, it's all a part of the transhumanism agenda. Okay? You know, transhumanism is all about, you know, Esau overcoming the feeble body through the use of technology. Spoken words into text and projected instantaneously. This enables spoken conversations to be more inclusive to deaf people. As the founder of Deaf Kids International, Steve Crump explains. I might not quite catch everything, but this is giving me a real-time narrative which enables me to be informed, it enables me to be involved, it enables me to make decisions because I know what is being said. Voice recognition algorithms quickly convert spoken language into readable text. We're taking that audio stream from the microphone on the glasses. We're running it through a piece of transcription software, which users have probably seen before, the ability to turn audio into subcaptions. What we're doing, though, is then taking those captions and putting them into augmented reality. In Pakistan, the app Connect here connects deaf people with sign language interpreters via video call. They interpret spoken language into sign language and sign language into speech. This helps deaf people lead more independent lives. Scenarios for the calls are bank interview, opening an account, problem with any account, hospital scenarios, some emergency scenarios where uh, communication is very important. 
Of course, communication is crucial in creating a society that's more inclusive to people with disabilities. And communication can happen through music too. American dancer Robert Wexler aims to make music accessible to all people, no matter their physical or mental capabilities. So with that, I'm going to say, Shalom is on to the next one.